So next, we we need to, we might need to like uh, look a little bit in terms of this uh, the difference between the DevOps and the DevSecOps. So what what exactly like we are doing in terms of this DevOps or DevSecOps? What exactly it means or what exactly it is doing uh, in this particular case? So uh, here uh, you will be having these two questions now. What is DevSecOps and how does it differ from DevOps? And the next question would be, how do I get started with implementing DevSecOps in my project? So first thing, we have to like understand the difference between DevSecOps and DevOps. And then how I can start implementing this particular DevSecOps here. So this, that is what actually we will be having here. So the first thing, this is the difference like you will be like seeing here. So DevOps is all about combining your development, application delivery, and the IT operations. So if you combine these three things, then in an automated way, or it's, it's combined is the is the not the right word. If you collaborate your development team, uh, operations team, and that will eventually end up in the application delivery. So that you can call it as DevOps. And on the other side, in terms of this particular DevSecOps, if you just like add the development, the IT operations, security, and the application delivery, yes. So then you can call it. You are actually bringing the security as the additional stage here. You are just like bringing the security as the additional stage here. So that is what actually we are uh, considering in this particular place. So now like you, you might be having some clear picture here. So what is DevSecOps and what is DevOps? So if you are just like automating the development of the IT operations, it is DevOps. And in addition to the DevOps and the development and the IT operations, if you are bringing security inside that, then that is called as DevSecOps. Yeah, and yeah, I want to like uh, make a clear picture of this uh, salary of a DevSecOps engineer and team. This is for the uh, this is this is not for the experienced person. So this is for this is normally for the DevSecOps engineer, not a senior DevSecOps engineer or for not for the practical DevSecOps engineer. So this is just for the senior DevSecOps. I mean normal DevSecOps engineer in, in a kind of like the average base uh, pay would be. And um, yes, you might be like already aware of this particular glass door and all. You are already aware of that. So you can even have a look on this particular one. So what, what is the current rate or what is the expectation that you can just like set up like based on your experience and based on your skill set that you are having. And yeah, this is another one we are having. I mean, I just like took this from. Uh, uh, I think like this is from Ambition Box, I guess. So what is the actual salary of a uh, DevSecOps engineer? I mean, that is based out of India, but nowadays we are having a lot of uh, uh, opportunities from remote as well. Yeah, and uh, this is a job description that I took from the one of the websites to get the better understanding. And uh, I think like it, I took this from Naukri, so uh, from one of the famous uh, product-based uh, companies. So like your responsibilities would be deploy the security tools and the processes and establish the and maintain the automated security, which means the pipeline you should be doing. And also we have to support the development teams and we have to analyze the requirements based on the uh, what is the, like testing or based on the requirement. All right. Uh, and also like we have to monitor the infrastructure. I already told the continuous monitoring. So these are the high level responsibilities you are having and these are the uh, non technical skills that you should have like the master degree or like bachelor degree is fine. Yeah, so because like the job description will change from company to company and also the three plus years experience and a good communication skill and the good analytics skills, right? And also like, yeah, once again, the communication skills like in terms of this. So yes, I hope like you will be good in terms of the communication skill and the analytical skills. Like the only lagging or only thing we have to consider here is this technical thing here. And yeah, so if you see what in what are all the areas that you have to like consider. So uh, secure development life cycle and also the SAST, SCA, DAST. And also we, we need to like consider this DevSecOps tool chain, DevSecOps maturity model. And these are all the familiarity about the tools. So Azure DevOps, Docker, Checkmarks, 
and uh, Snopsys, right? And also the infrastructure as a code, container and image security scanners. So in our training, we will be actually managing, uh, not all these, but we will be managing all the open source tools for the SAST, SCA, DAST and all infrastructure as a code, container scanning, image security scanners. For all those things, we will be taking care of, or we will be using our open source tools here. Yeah. And also team, if you just like uh, see the, uh, the, the, the standard or the area here means like I just like took this from the LinkedIn. If you just like uh, search for DevOps, uh, the jobs you are having is nearby 23,000. Uh, so it's a kind of like a little bit of older uh, screenshot. And uh, if you see this particular dev ops the, the 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 requirement the requirement or the the one which they have like posted only in terms of 512 so but nowadays like now they are expecting like both the devops and the devsecops should be done by a single person itself so uh, eventually like this one got like increased the, the the rate got like increased here so definitely like this will actually help you to uh, uh what is it like take like a lot of things yeah so this is actually the grow the growing area and also the growing portion the requirements will be high in the upcoming days so my suggestion would be yes so just wanted to show the actual status here in terms of devsecops so that's why like i uh, just posted this particular uh, screenshots here yeah and uh, i'm just like entering into some technical concepts of this uh, devsecops uh, life cycle the stages and the essential tools here so first thing we will be having this planning and a design. So you have to plan and design the exact requirement, everything. So for that, we will be having this uh, section called the thread modeling. And under the thread modeling, what is the purpose? So we will think as an attacker in the design phase itself. Like we will be identifying the potential security threats and the vulnerabilities during the design phase itself. And what are all the, I, I'm just like mentioning only some of the open source tools under the freemium tools. So uh, you are having this Microsoft thread modeling tool or OS thread dragon in order to perform this thread modeling. And you will be documenting all these things. So for that, which, which one like you will use? So you will use the tools, something similar to Jira and the confluence. So what is the purpose here means? It is to document and manage the security requirements. So we have to, we should be having some backlogs. So for that only we are having this zero and confluence. Second one would be the development and the coding. So the first one would be secure coding practices. So we have to educate the developers on the secure coding practices to prevent the common vulnerabilities. Like what are all the there are there are some like top 10 vulnerabilities kind of thing that no so from os top 10 so using that you we have to educate the developers because your product is actually coming from your developers ide the actual product you are seeing is coming from your developers ides that is actually the workplace so we have to control the security vulnerabilities from there itself so for that you can make use of of these particular tools so as security coding practices and secure code warrior and then like you are having this sast so sast is nothing but your static application security thing and you will be analyzing the source code here okay so you will be like analyzing the uh, source code in order to like uh, you, you will be like analyzing the source code uh, in order to like check like what are all the uh, different uh, vulnerabilities that you are getting uh, and for that, like you are having this different type of tools and you are having the sonar cube, check marks and for the static code analyzer and a lot of other tools also like in terms of uh, uh, paid one. And then we are having this build and integration. So the first one we are having this dependency management where we have to scan or in this particular stage, we will be scanning the open source libraries under the dependencies. So we will be just like scanning the open source libraries under the dependencies. That is the actual uh, uh, work of this particular one. And then you will be having this automated build process here. So where like you will be having this, uh, um, you will be writing the pipeline. So automated build process is nothing but you will be writing the pipeline there. 
and for that like which tool like you will use you will use this tool called jenkins or github actions or gitlab ci cd so these kind of tools then finally we will be having this testing under the validation and there we are having this dynamic application security testing where we will run or we will run the testing on the running application so we will just like try to work like a pen tester or penetration tester and the tool we will be like using here is OASP zap burp shoot and acunitics and then like you are having this iast which is interactive application security testing and that we will be just like using this tools called contra security vera code hcl apps and so these kind of tools we will be like implementing that and what it will do this iast actually combines the testing of SAS and I, I task. It will perform like both the code scanning and the runtime behavior simultaneously. And then we will be having this uh, container security scanning. We will scan the container images for the vulnerabilities. So we are having a lot of tools, Aquad, security from Trivi, Twistlock under the anchor as well. And in addition to that, you are having a lot of tools in the market. And then like you are having this deployment and the release. So we will be like deploying our application, which is nothing but our infrastructure as a code. And for the infrastructure as a code, security, we are using these tools called uh, THSIC or AWS Cloud Formation Bond. And once again, we are having this continuous deployment pipeline. And that we will be implementing the deployments. So we will finally deploy our application or container uh, uh, image to the respective cluster. So that we will be like using the same tools here. So Jenkins and the GitHub Actions and the GitLab CKC. So these are all the tools we will be using. Then finally, we will be like, uh, having this operations under the monitoring. So for monitoring the applications under the infrastructure, uh, for that we will be using this tool called the Splunk, LStack, or IPM. Uh, IBM Q radar and also incident response management. So we have to automate all these things. So whenever the continuous monitoring tools found a security threat, the incident will be automatically uh, created. And in order to manage all those things, we are having this pager duty and the Splunk Phantom and the hype we are having in this session. Yeah. And then, like, yes, we are having the compliance under the governance. So, this automated compliance audits, where you will be having means if your application or if your product is actually going for some of the standard certifications like ISO or SOC 2 kind of thing, there you can implement this compliance under the governance tools. And then, like, you are having the regular security audits in order to perform the regular uh, security audits, like uh, bi weekly or monthly. So, for those particular things, you for those particular uh, process, you can use this tool called Nessus, Qualis, or Rapid7 Insight uh, VM. And finally, yes, we are having this uh, feedback under the continuous improvement. And uh, for this post incident analysis, yes, once again, we will be documenting everything, the blameless post mortem. And we will just like use this project management tools called Jira and Confluence. And based on this, we have to perform the continuous learning. So we have to like get from that, we have to learn the monitoring, and we have to continuously improve the security practices. Team, once again, I'm telling. In terms of DevOps, DevSecOps, everything will be continuous and as well as you were learning. So continuous learning should be that in order to manage this. Process.